Time to meet my next guest. As a member of the Monty Python team and a creator of the hit musical Spamalot, this man is one of our great comedy legends. Yes, he is. Recently, he went public about a devastating health scare, uh, which he's here to talk about tonight. It is quite the story. Please welcome Eric Idle. Oh! Come in. We love you. We love you. Thank you so much for doing it. Okay. You know each other. <laughs> yes. Uh, Eric, Lydia, <laughs> Eric, yes, David, yes, yes. have a yes, seat. Yes, Why you. The couch, it's tough. Ooh. <laughs> no, it's fine for men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know everyone, Eric. I don't know everybody, but I, I, but we were on a talk show, David and I, vaguely. I forget who it was. Oh, I did. We crossed paths. Yeah. yeah. Jamie, I know. Of course. Yes. All right. Listen, you're here to tell us this. Uh, as I say, it is an extraordinary story, and it's a... It's a, a very frightening story. So before we get into it, I think we should just reassure people you are well. Yes, I am very well, yes. OK, Yay. so it's... A... <laughs> <laughs> the show is dedicated to <laughs> Eric <Hyde. laughs> um, <laughs> So, OK, so in order to tell the story, do you go back to 2019 or do you go back later? Uh, I go earlier. OK. It starts at about, you know, 2009, and I'm, uh, I'm writing a play. Uh, it's after Spam a lot, and I'm writing a play. And I think it's a really great idea for a play. It's going to go really well on Broadway. It's called Death the Musical. <laughs> <laughs> Try and sell that one, you know. So, <laughs> anyway, and it, to me, I like it because I'm, I'm writing a play about a guy who's writing a play called Death the Musical, and he finds out he's dying. So that's the, I like irony. Yeah. That's my premise. So I'm writing away. And I need I need some you know I need some medical background. So I go to see my doctor. And, and he says, come to the Dodgers game. So we're sitting at the Dodgers game. I say, what is the fastest way to get rid of a character? And he said, it's very simple, pancreatic cancer. You've got about three weeks, if you're lucky, and it's inevitable, you know. So I said, great, that's perfect. <laughs> I'll start writing away. And then ten years later, he's still my doctor, and I'm going for a routine checkup, and I'm having a blood test and an MRI, and he said, put a little bit of iodine in there. And so... And he said, come in here, sit, sit down a minute. And he shows me on the screen. And I said, what's that? He said, uh, it's pancreatic cancer. Oh, wow. And I laugh <laughs> because it's hilarious. I have the writer of the play about a writer writing a play about death, the musical, <laughs> now has bloody pancreatic cancer. And, you know, so you've got to break it to the wife and the kids. And so we agreed we'd call it Kenny. Because it's such a scary term, you know. Yes. I'm suffering from Kenny. We're going to go to the Kenny Centre and have a <laughs> Kenny operation. <laughs> and, and so um, he said, the good news is it's really early stage. We've seen it... We don't, we've never seen it this early, so you've got a very good chance of surviving. So within about ten days, I'm whipped into Cedars and uh, to you know, a cancer specialist who, who actually, after five hours, operates and takes it all out. And so I, I was extremely fortunate. I was very, very lucky. And, um, you know, we didn't tell anybody, but, but you know, I, I was very fortunate. And then you revealed this diagnosis in a very Eric Idle way. <laughs> Where, how and when did you reveal that you'd had pancreatic cancer? Well, I revealed it after I was on The Masked Singer. And, um, the Masked in, in America, Singer. this isn't in... a spoiler. Yeah. No. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I was on The Masked Singer, and it was the premiere episode of the season, and I, I thought, well... You know, afterwards, they ask you to be interviewed, by, and you go on the shows, and you, 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 know, you plug your book or your film or whatever you're plugging, and I thought, you know what, I, I think what I ought to do is to, is to come out to cancer and, and tell people that I actually survived pancreatic cancer, because this is very good news for everybody. Mm. Yeah. So what, what I thought I'd do is I'd, I'd start a fund called uh, the Bright Side Fund, I'm looking on the bright side, you know. <laughs> and, and, and then people can, you know, contribute and we can put it to research and encourage early testing. And so that's what, what, what I'm doing. I mean, we started it and people are contributing and it's going very well. And when you went into hospital, didn't you use the man who sings uh, Also Look at the Bright Side, the man who starts the song? Was it his name you used? Oh, yeah, that, because in, in Cedars, you know, they, they said, well, you better go under a pseudonym, you know, because right. uh, you don't want to be bothered by the tabloids. I thought, well... Actually, you don't really have... It's not one of my worries, but still. So, <laughs> uh, I thought, they said, so what should you call yourself? And I, well, I think, oh, I don't know. Um, I couldn't think of my name, so I said, Mr Cheeky, because he's the character in The Life of Brian. So I'm sitting there ready for my operation. I go, Mr Cheeky. <laughs> <laughs>
Mr. Cheeky. Oh, fuck, that's me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name I'm known at, is Steve. <laughs> so, uh, quite nice. I'm uh, lucky I didn't call myself Biggest Dickus, actually. <laughs> 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 So, you're on the mask You are dressed as a hedgehog. We've got a picture of the hedgehog. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, that's me, yes. yes. It doesn't seem like in a minute he's going to tell us he survived cancer. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I, I survived being run over I, by a car, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but you sang a Beatles song. I did. I, I sang Love Me Do, which I rather... I like that song, and I, um... It was, it's not easy to get a Beatles song, yeah, and uh, a friend of mine said, well, why don't you ask Paul? Because he wrote it when he was 16. And it's not a Beatle copyright, it's, it's Paul's copyright. So I wrote him a letter, and I said, can I use your song? And he said, all right, yes, you, of course you can. You can use my song, but please tell me when the show airs so I can be sure to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, wrote, I wrote to him and told him when it was on, you know, yeah. and uh, I said, well, it may not be the best rendition you've ever heard of Love Me Do, but it's the best ever done by a hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, you, you clearly are feeling very well. Tell me this, because you, you, you know, because you were told this thing that you kind of thought, right, well, that's it, that's curtains, but now it's not curtains. Yes. What's your life like? Are you living differently? Um, I, think, I think I am in a way that I'm more grateful. Uh, you know, you, you, you think, well, I've got a bit more life than I expected, and so I can... I thought what was nice about coming out to cancer was I could do a bit of good. So I made an alliance with Stand Up to Cancer, which is a, a charity, and yeah. they've been helping me, and, and the Bright Side Fund has helped me. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very... I'm grateful to be alive. Yeah, well, listen, I hope it helps other people, and we are so grateful you're alive. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here and sharing Bye. the story. Good luck with everybody. Eric Idle, everybody! It's an amazing story. I'm so happy for you. Okay, it is time for music. This British pop superstar.